Okay, so I, we couldn't have a, uh, a live webinar, could we, or a live coaching session about conversation, about dates, without talking about conversation skills. I mean, if there's one question that I would receive about first dates, it's like, Haley, what do I talk about on a first date? So if this is a point of anxiety for you, I've got some really good conversation skills and tools that you can use in this section to make your first dates fly. Now, before I get started, as ever, we've got another survey coming in. So get your finger on the plus button at the ready, which is, do you worry about running out of things to say on your dates? So again, vote yes if you worry about running out of things to say, and vote no if you're a cool, calm, collected conversationalist. <laughs> so uh, conversation skills are super important. They're, of course, the way that we connect with other people and also how we demonstrate how we're different and unique and how special our connection is. Um, if you are interested, like Owen, in learning more about conversation skills, during our last Match Live coaching session from September, I gave loads of other tips about having great conversation skills. So this is actually a really good, another good live coaching session that you want to probably go back and watch on replay. So today, though, I am going to be focusing about what you can talk about on your date. So if you often feel a bit stressed, like you need to have a plan for the conversation, you're worried about there being awkward pauses, or you're just not sure exactly what you should or shouldn't talk about, you're in the right place. So the first tip I have today, and this is a little bit counterintuitive and you might not have thought about it, is when it comes to building a good conversation, you actually want to learn how to talk about yourself more. Now, to, especially to us Brits, that feels strange, right? Because we've been taught that it's very, very impolite just to talk about ourselves. And that actually asking questions is a nicer form of conversation. But often when we ask lots of questions in a row, you may end up feeling like you're sort of interviewing your date. And they also might not enjoy the experience of the date that much. They might feel a bit put on the spot and grilled by you rather than as well as you expressing that interest in them, they should also be finding you interesting and finding that they connect with details of your life. It's going to be very hard for someone to connect with details of your life if they don't know anything about you. So rather than talking about yourself being boastful, it's actually a really good way that you can build trust with someone else and encourage them to open up. In conversation, it's almost like there's this rule of reciprocation where if you can share openly with someone else, they're going to be able to be open with you as well. So it's about kind of letting someone know in the conversation that you're okay to talk openly to one another. So it is about doing that and it's about building trust. A good kind of workaround to think about how to do this is when you want to go and ask that question, Instead, stop and think, could I instead share my opinion on this topic? Could I almost ask that question to myself, share my thoughts and feelings on it, and then do it in such a way that encourages the other person to respond? So let me give you an example. <laughs> so instead of saying, uh, where did you last go on your, where did you go on your holidays this year? Instead, you would say, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad um, I got away when I did for a bit of winter sun, um, my, though my tan line's fading now. So when you say something like that, what you're actually doing is two things. When you say, uh, I don't know about you, or I don't know if you've had this experience, or you'll probably disagree with me. When you say that magic word, you, you're actually encouraging the other person to respond to you. It's a subtle way of showing the other person that there's something here that they can contribute to. Then you share your opinion. Now, this is particularly helpful if you're talking about a topic that's a bit controversial. So whether it's how someone feels, or dare I say it, about Brexit um, or some other topic like that. If you ask someone like a direct question about it, like, did you vote for Brexit? They're going to feel like really put on the spot and panicked that if they give you the answer that is, doesn't agree with you, that this is going to cause an argument. So actually, by leading the conversation, it's a really good way to make to create transparency and to make the other person feel more comfortable. 
This is also true, for instance, if you were talking about commitment, rather than saying, so what are you looking for? <laughs> or, um, or so what is this? Those awkward dating questions that we all just want to avoid. It's so much better normally to actually share and express your opinion on this. So use what I call the go first principle, get more comfortable with talking about yourself. That's actually a really good policy for you to build more conversation on your first date. And if you do want worry about running out of things to say, think about it this way. If you give yourself more permission to talk about your life, your passions and things that are important to you, think about your life. If you wrote that down, that's like a library. For it's there's so much information there. So it's not the only thing to say. It's probably you are judging what you would like to say is not good enough. So instead, I really want to encourage you that it's okay for you to be open and share information. The second thing I want you to focus on is learning when to highlight if there's a connection in the conversation. So this is also a really nice, subtle way of flirting with someone and paying them a really good compliment. Sometimes a, a lovely compliment to receive is simply that someone has been really listening to you and is really engaged with what you're saying. So rather than telling someone they've got a nice smile, if you listen to what they're telling you and you pay them a compliment about their personality, this often is actually going to be much more impactful. So say you said to them, oh, I really like how spontaneous you are, or I like how caring you are. This immediately is a better kind of quality of compliment than just talking about something physical that you can observe about them. Now, how do we build a connection from this? Well, I call this the triangle of connection. So listen to it, because the triangle has three points. There's three little steps here um, to demonstrate the connection to the other person. So the first step is just, as I've said, you want to get used to validating people, which means giving them a compliment, when you notice something you like about them or something that meets your standards. So use the phrase, uh, I like how you are, or... I really like that you seem to be. So you're really identifying a quality that you like in them. And this is a really nice, genuine compliment to give someone. The second little step of our triangle is then to relate that to yourself. So you could say, I really like how you're so spontaneous. You know, I'm exactly the same. I like, I'm terrible at making plans in advance. I really like to go with the flow and just be in the moment. So by relating it that their quality to who you are, it builds this sense of you being similar as people. So again, it's like deepening the compliment. If you want to deepen it one step further, let's do the third point of that triangle. So the third step here is where you say, oh, it's great that you're spontaneous. Um, I'm really similar, actually. I like to just go with the flow. Most people aren't like that. You know, a lot of people have to have a really clear plan for so phrasing it this way you're kind of demonstrating how you two are really similar and it's like you guys against the world you know it's, it will make you feel like you're in your own little club of people that share those values so it's a really nice way to pay a compliment now I know what you're thinking you're like Hayley that sounds great but what if I disagree with them what if I actually really like what if I'm an organizer what if I really like to plan things well this can actually also be really really good Often the best first dates are going to be a combination of finding these points of like commonality between you, but also having some kind of playful disagreement as well, or some things that you don't quite see eye to eye on. So don't worry going into your dates that you have to have everything in common or you have to agree or that, oh no, if you disagree, it's going to turn into an argument. It doesn't need to be the case. In fact, when you are engaging with someone, if you show that you're okay to keep your own opinions, it can actually make you seem really attractive. Because when you don't change your opinion to impress somebody else, that shows that you've got self-esteem. It's actually a really, can be a really attractive quality. And just because you don't agree with a person doesn't mean it's a disagreement. If you say things playfully, um, so you focus on your tone of voice, actually it will be received in the right way so if you say to someone I really like how spontaneous you are it's also totally okay for you to say you know what I'm the exact opposite I am like a super planner I plan everything I live by my GCAL 
it's going to then have that playful banter in the conversation, which seems really fun. You could even say, I bet you need some need someone like me in your life to get you organized. <laughs> so be okay. You don't feel like you need to change who you are to impress somebody else. In fact, actually, by keeping some of that playful banter, by having your own opinions, and by not changing your mind just to agree with somebody else, there's a way that you can put that across that is, in fact, super attractive to the other person as well. So if these conversation tips have been helpful, I'm hoping to go one step even more helpful with this next one, which is sharing with you my five or not, oh, I've got so many questions out of on dates, five of my favorite questions to ask on dates. So if you're somebody who often worries about what topics you should talk about, this is going to help you out. Because when I'm thinking about what makes a great first date, of course, for some people, it will be more interesting to talk about travel versus work. But the topic isn't actually that important. A topic of conversation is only ever a vehicle for you to get to know who the other person is. So great conversations are often really focused on allowing the other person to talk candidly and openly about who they are. So we want to give someone opportunities to be open with you. Now, if you ask them, how long have you worked somewhere? We're not really getting a lot of good feedback there from them in terms of we're not going to really find out much about who they are as a person. So all the questions that I'm about to suggest are all designed to help encourage the other person to open up. So the first one is, what's one thing you would love to learn? So that's my first top question. And this is really great because it enables the other person to sort of maybe uh, boast, <laughs> dare I say it, gives the other person a chance where they can start to be really open um, with you and share and kind of impress you by talking about an area of the, their lives that you might not have thought about. My second top question is, what's one thing I'd have never guessed about you? So this is great because it also gives the other person an opportunity to make the conversation more flirtatious or more fun if they want it to. So they have a choice here about what information they want to share. And you'll be able to notice here how much they're trying to impress you by the information that they're choosing to share. So what's one thing you'd have never have guessed about them? Again, get, get away from those logical topics of conversation. Let's do this instead. My third question is, who's, your, who's their best friend and would you like them? We can tell a lot about a person by their social relationships. Obviously, our friendships do define us to an extent. So if you want to understand what values are important to a person and what it'd be like to spend more time with them, to ask them about their best friend or maybe even their family members is a really good route for you to go down. Fourth question, are they an introvert or an extrovert? Again, this is a really nice question to encourage them to open up about who they are as a person. It's great if on your date, you can stop talking about stuff and things like places and work and, you know, the places you've been on holiday. Instead, you want to get into a discussion about who you both are as people and whether you're similar or dissimilar. So questions like, are they an introvert or an extrovert, gives you a really good opportunity to discover that. Oh, before I get to my fifth question, I can just see the survey results have come in. 60% um, of you say, yes, you worry about running out of things to say on a date. So I really hope that this section then has been helpful to you in getting you started with some ideas for your conversations. Now, this last question is actually my favorite one. So if you haven't written any of them down so far, write this one down, which is, do you think we would have clicked if we met five years ago or five years in the future? Now, this question is clever because when we get stuck talking about the present, it's, an, it's easier to run out of conversation. When you talk about the past or the future, the conversation really opens up. I also want you to notice how there's a real chance to build a bit of romantic connection here because you're sort of talking about whether you could like each other and whether and there's a lot of opportunity for play you know would your younger self not have realized what an amazing person this person was or in five years in the future would you already be coupled up and sad that you didn't meet this person earlier on so it gives a lot of opportunity to be hypothetical 
and to talk in an abstract way about how you connect to one another. So it's also a good way to feel out if the other person is feeling just not maybe a load, not a Walt Disney level spark, but maybe a little spark on that date with you. So the question is, if you'd have met five years in the past or five years in the future, would you have clicked? So before we get before we get onto our recap, there's also just one last little point that to make here, which is if you are talking about flirting, often questions like this are actually a much more elegant way for you to flirt. We don't want flirting to be too heavy handed on that first date. My analogy for this is that flirting really is like the spice. It's the salt and pepper on the meal. It's not the whole meal. So sometimes by talking in that way, that is doing enough to convey interest in the other person. And we don't really need to go into the realm of going for really explicit compliments about, you know, somebody, somebody's eyes or someone's smile. Sometimes actually complimenting them on who they are as a person and how you two relate towards one another is in fact far more powerful. So um, before we answer our questions for this section, let's just do a qu quick recap of the main points. So I want you to remember, it's all right to talk about yourself. I know this is very un-British of us, but it is actually okay for you to share information about who you are. Um, remember also to always ask big questions that encourage the other person to open up. So some questions are bad, but not all questions are bad. If they're allowing the other person to be open with you, eh, then they're pretty good. Um, flirtation should also always be subtle. So, uh, and only keep going if the other person shows that they're comfortable with you flirting with them. So sometimes I said, just using a question like, do you think we would have clicked if we met five years ago? That is enough flirtation, people. That's enough to show interest. So don't worry too much about having to go too heavy on the flirtation. Sometimes actually really listening to a person and giving them a sincere compliment about who they are will actually work better. Now, before our next section, I have got three more questions that you've sent in for me. Uh, and the first one I've got is from Catherine, who asks, how to keep momentum on chat until you meet if it's weeks? Well, this is going to be a very common question right now because we've got Christmas break coming up. So if you connected some with someone recently online, it might be a little while before you actually meet them in person. Um, if this is you right now, first of all, recognize it's not actually all on you to keep that connection alive. That is a two-way street between the two of you. So you're, you and the person you're messaging are both equally responsible for keeping that connection alive. Um, by, in terms of how you go about it, my favorite phrase for this is intermittent yet impactful. So instead of feeling like you need to send them a good you know, good morning message every day, which can feel a bit strange if you haven't met someone in real life yet. Instead, focus on high quality communication that gives them an insight into your life. It could be sending a picture of thing or a really short voice note just to say hi. Often these, these pieces of communication, if you maybe message every three or five days, that could be enough to keep a bit of mystery and curiosity about meeting whilst not feeling like you need to sustain a chat, you know, over weeks on end. So the next question is from Rachel, who is talking about exactly what I was mentioning earlier about the spark, which is if you don't feel a spark or fancy someone on the first date, is it worth pursuing? Can a spark grow in time or should you move on? Now, I'm personally a big fan of the spark that grows. So as I said before, I think as we become more mature, dare I say it more realistic, then I think sometimes we just don't experience the spark in the same way. Perhaps you need to trust someone more before you actually feel like you can let go and experience that spark. I think the spark is also a lot to do with how we're feeling. Are you feeling relaxed? Are you feeling attractive within yourself? Or are you feeling kind of stressed and overwhelmed by like the end of year madness that always happens. So remember that the spark isn't all about what the other person brings to the table. It's also about what we bring to the table. So if someone does, it does feel easy and relaxing communicating with them, it could be well worth giving it those two or three dates to see if a spark can develop. Our final question of this section comes from Neil. Uh, and who asked a very relevant question this week, which is how much physical contact is appropriate, 
especially in these tricky COVID times. And he's put three question marks on the end there. Um, so Neil, yes, it is difficult, isn't it? Because the thing, the thing about COVID and physical touch is that people will have different opinions about what they think is appropriate. For some people, it's an elbow bump or a wave. Other people will give you a cuddle. So the only way we figure out how someone feels about this is to communicate. And so again, be, being warm and being candid here, when you meet your date is going to really help you. When you first meet someone, just simply say like, are we doing hugs or more like elbow bumps? So give someone a choice about how, what level of physical contact they would like to have and just have open verbal communication about it. It's so much easier to get somebody's consent verbally when it comes to physical contact than trying to second guess what they're all about or what they want. So I hope that helps you, Neil. And um, I hope you get a, <laughs> and I hope you get a, maybe get the odd hug in over the Christmas period. So we're going on to our final section now, which is all about great ideas for first dates and how you can get some great first date planning. <laughs> 